In this video, I'm going to be talking about the basal ganglia pathways, specifically the difference between the direct and the indirect pathway. Now let's get into today's video. Again, it's on the basal ganglia. And specifically, we're going to be differentiating the two pathways, the direct pathway and the indirect pathway. And this is a really challenging topic for a lot of medical students because each of these two pathways has a lot of distinct parts to it. And you need to know you know, certain things in each pathway. So what's the anatomical structure in the brain is the pathway subcomponent excitatory or inhibitory, et cetera, et cetera. And before we get into those nitty gritty details that you absolutely need to know, I think we should just begin with a little bit of an overview about what the basal ganglia is. So the basal ganglia is actually a collection of interconnected structures. Like you don't look at the brain and say, oh, that's the basal ganglia. Really, it's a group of subcortical interconnected structures. And, you know, neuroanatomy is really complex for a lot of medical students because people just don't take the time to look at the words and understand the terminology being used here. But when something is subcortical, it means below the cortex. So if you look at the brain, the outer kind of peripheral part of the brain, the meat, if you will, that's all cortical. That's all cortex, right? Frontal cortex, parietal cortex, temporal cortex, etc. So anything deep to that is subcortical. And that's what we're talking about with the structures that comprise the basal ganglia. Now, specifically, those structures include the caudate, the putamen, which together, the caudate and the putamen are the striatum, the globus pallidus, which has two subcomponents, the globus pallidus internus and the globus pallidus externus, the subthalamic nucleus, and the substantia nigra. Okay, so all of these parts together make up the basal ganglia. So these are all subcortical neuroanatomical parts of the brain that together comprise the basal ganglia. Now, the overall effect of the basal ganglia is to coordinate movement. And it uses both excitatory and inhibitory interneurons to connect these structures. And as a general rule of thumb, any neuron that, is, that uses glutamate is going to be excitatory. And any neuron that uses GABA is going to be inhibitory. This is a really big, high-yield concept for you to understand, not only for USMLE and COMLEX, but moving forward in your medical career. Glutamate, excitation, GABA, inhibition. Just memorize it. And that's really what you need to know. So when I when I reference the interneurons in these pathways in this video specifically, if it's a glutamate neuron, it will be shown in green, which means it's exciting, it's excitatory. And if it's a GABA interneuron, it will be shown in red, which means it's inhibiting because it's inhibitory. Now, the basal ganglia has two distinct pathways. There's the direct pathway and the indirect pathway. Each of these two pathways has two distinct goals the direct pathway initiates movement and the indirect pathway terminates movement, okay? And this will become a little bit more clear once we go through the pathway and I illustrate what's going on. Now let's get started with the pathway. So you start with the motor cortex. So the motor cortex sends excitatory signals to the striatum. Now remember, the striatum is the caudate nucleus plus the putamen, okay? But for the purposes of simplifying on the slide and in the video to help you memorize this, I'm just going to write striatum. So motor cortex sends excitatory neurons, which again are glutamate, shown in green, to the striatum. And then the striatum sends inhibitory neurons, which are GABA, shown in red, to the globus pallidus internus and the substantia nigra. The substantia nigra and the globus pallidus internus send inhibitory neurons to the thalamus, and the thalamus sends excitatory neurons back to the motor cortex. Now this loop, everything you see here, this is the direct pathway. And the net effect, again, of the direct pathway is to turn on the motor cortex. And really what's happening here is you're disinhibiting thalamic control of motor planning. So again, the basal ganglia's role is the coordination of movement. It coordinates movement, it plans motor movement. It, it, it's as if you're assigning purpose to the movement of the body. Now, in order for the brain to do this, the thalamus, which is the sensory integration center of the brain, has to communicate with the motor cortex of the brain because the motor cortex is what's responsible for taking different signals and yielding motor output. And it's through this loop that the direct pathway initiates movement. 
okay so everything that you see on this slide is direct pathway now let's pivot for a second and talk about the indirect pathway and then we'll come back and we'll compare and point out all the high yields that you should remember so the indirect pathway starts with the motor cortex at the top of the slide and just like the direct pathway it too starts with sending excitatory signals to the striatum and this is where the pathways differ so the indirect pathway the striatum then sends inhibitory interneurons to the globus pallidus externus so you can see in the flow chart if you will that we've now pivoted into the direct indirect pathway the globus pallidus externus will send inhibitory interneurons to the subthalamic nucleus and then the subthalamic nucleus will send excitatory interneurons back to the globus pallidus internus and the substantia nigra and at this point the indirect pathway kind of takes a turn and comes back and finishes out the exact same way as the direct pathway which is to say that the globus pallidus internus and the substantia nigra send inhibitory signals to the thalamus and then the thalamus sends excitatory signals to the motor cortex so the left side of this flow chart is direct pathway which we already talked about and the right side of this pathway is the indirect pathway and the net effect of the indirect pathway is to turn off the motor cortex okay so you're activating the inhibition pathway if you will now this can be a little confusing for some people so I really want you to hone in on what the two differences are clinically and functionally in these pathways and really what you need to to understand and look at is the substantia nigra the substantia nigra's role chiefly is to inhibit movement so normally the substantia nigra inhibits the thalamus which would normally excite the motor cortex so if you're inhibiting the thalamus and therefore the thalamus cannot excite the motor cortex you don't get planned movement in the direct pathway what you'll notice is that the striatum turns off the substantia nigra which is where you see the pink plus sign next to the red arrow going from the striatum down to the substantia nigra this in the direct pathway is disinhibition right because you're inhibiting the thing the substantia nigra that normally inhibits motor planning so in the direct pathway it would be correct to say that the, the direct pathway disinhibits thalamic control of motor planning because you're turning off the thing that causes inhibition okay you're turning off the substantia nigra which normally causes inhibition now compare that to the indirect pathway in the indirect pathway the subthalamic nucleus is sending excitatory neurons to the substantia nigra so it's turning on the substantia nigra which means it's turning on the thing that causes inhibition okay so when you turn on something that inhibits the overall effect is inhibitory but when you turn off something that inhibits as is the case in the direct pathway the overall effect is excitatory so as you can see the reason that the direct pathway causes activation of motor planning and the reason that the indirect pathway causes inhibition of motor planning is totally dependent on whether you're turning on or turning off the substantia nigra so the really key nuance in these pathways happens right here where those pink plus signs are what happens to the substantia nigra and this is what you really need to understand on a deep level especially in the first two years of medical school when you're taking your exams but also for usmle and complex so those are the differences and I know what you're thinking you're saying to yourself wow dirty how the heck am I going to remember the order of these structures and what's going on and the answer is pretty simple you're going to use my awesome mnemonic so here's what you do you write M sit right M sit M for motor cortex S for striatum I for internus right globus pallidus internus and T for thalamus okay that's what you write for both direct and indirect and there's one difference between these in the indirect pathway you add in in the middle okay so it's still M sit but in the very middle smack middle between the S and the I you add in because the indirect pathway adds in and this reminds you that in the indirect pathway you're also adding the externus right globus pallidus externus and the nucleus or the subthalamic nucleus so if you remember M sit for direct and indirect and add the N for the indirect pathway you'll always be able to remember what the order of these structures are again just to hammer this home motor cortex striatum globus pallidus internus 
and thalamus. And then in the indirect pathway, you add N, which is globus pallidus externus, and the nucleus or the subthalamic nucleus. So write this out on a piece of paper a couple times so that your brain remembers what this looks like. But M sit, M sit, and then add N for the indirect pathway. And this is how you're going to remember the order of these pathways. So here we go. We've got M sit for direct and M M sit with N for the indirect pathway. And now you need to know which one sends excitatory signals, which one sends inhibitory signals. Because remember, half of the battle in memorizing this pathway is understanding if there's glutamate involved and it's an excitatory signal, or if there's GABA involved and it's an inhibitory signal. And the way that you do this is it's pretty simple. The first and last part of the pathway is excitatory. The part in the middle is inhibitory. And it's the same between the direct pathway and the indirect pathway. So you see direct on the left, and now look at indirect on the right. So the M, the S, the I, and the T, it's the same, right? First and last is excitatory. The two middle parts, the S and the I, are inhibitory. The only difference now is the N, in indirect pathway. And an indirect pathway, just memorize that the first part, the E, that's inhibitory, and the second part, the N, that's excitatory. So what, what should you memorize? Like, what's the mnemonic here? Remember that first and last are excitatory. Everything in the middle is inhibitory except for the subthalamic nucleus, right? The, the, the subthalamic nucleus will be excitatory. So this is what I used to remember back in the day when I was a medical student, and this is very sufficient to answer all of these questions correctly. But that's it for today's video. I hope that this was helpful for you. The basal ganglia pathways are very, very important, very high yield, and quite frankly, it's impressive if you're able to talk about this stuff as if you know what's going on.